Enough talking already. Let's get busy mastering the art of quilt binding. Two and a quarter inches is my go-to quilt binding width. Two inches will give you a very narrow tight binding. Now two and a half inches will give you a thicker binding. I cut my quilt binding strips from width of fabric. That is from salvage to salvage. If you're a beginner and you don't want to make your own quilt binding, by all means, they have a ton for sale in the stores. Now you don't even have to put them at an angle like I'm doing with mine. You can just sew them straight across. I know a lot of quilters that do it that way. The main purpose for putting it at an angle the way that I'm doing my strips is to keep a lot of that bulk out. That was easy. This binding is all ready to go. For my beginner quilt binding demonstration, I chose rounded corners. So many new quilters have so many issues with doing a mitered corner on quilts. I really do think they'd have much more success with a rounded corner if they just gave it a try. This really is the simplest way. You just follow the curve of your curve with your binding in your sewing machine and of course taking your time as you sew. <laughs> If you don't know about this binding technique that I'm gonna share with you right now, then you're in for a real treat. Do exactly what you see me doing in this video by turning that corner down, pressing it, and then folding it down again and giving it a hot press once more. Then you're going to lift it up and cut that little corner right there off. That'll keep the bulk out. This is what it should look like in the end. Lay the binding edge along the quilt sandwich edge. It is my opinion that new quilters should pin to the back of their quilt and then wrap that to the front when it's time to sew. That way they can literally see where they're stitching. When I was a new quilter, I would always do it the opposite way. And then I would end up with gaps in all of my binding along the back of all the spots that I missed. Oh, it aggravated me. I mean, I'm no expert or anything, but I know what worked for me and what didn't work. And I know when I got aggravated and frustrated in a project, it made me feel like I just couldn't do it. And I think we need to have success at the very start. So that will encourage us to keep going. And then we can just slowly build on that very first success. And that's how we get better and better. Are you loving this binding technique already? When I found out this technique existed, oh my word, it was a game changer in my quilt binding. If you know me, you know I'm not going to hand stitch that gap right there. No way, no how. So I used my machine. And if the fabric is busy enough, you're not even going to see it. <laughs> With rounded corners, you may need to cut into the curves just like you saw me do there. That will take some of the stress off around those corners and it'll lay a lot nicer. I'm going to use clips to show you how I stitch the binding on here. And I want you to take note on those clips. There is a flat edge on them. That is the side that should go toward the bottom of your sewing bed so that way it's not too bulky when you get to your machine and you sew all the way around. Let's head over to the sewing machine. Now you're going to just drop your needle just beyond where the edge of the binding ends there. Just come in just a little bit and then you're just going to sew all the way around. Go slow around the curves and you may need to lift your presser foot up as you go and keep that fabric flattened. What do you all think? Do you think rounded corners are easy enough to give it a try? Let me know down in the comments. I'm calling this one intermediate, but this is typically the one that most beginners start with. I am preparing my binding in the same way that I prepared it for the beginner quilt binding. The only difference is we are going to lay this one on the front of our quilt top. This is the first technique that I learned and this is also the one that frustrated me because laying it on the top means that you have to wrap it to the back which means you have to sew from the front though because you want that front thread to be on the front and your bobbin thread to be on the back so yeah. Anyhow when doing the corners you sew all the way up until you're a quarter inch away from the very end. With your needle down, lift up your presser foot and then turn your fabric so it's like at a V angle shape. Do a 45 degree stitch down to the corner and then back. 
pull out your corner so you can see what in the world you're doing. When I pull mine away from my needle, I leave my threads attached. Maneuver that angled binding over so that it is flush with the raw edge and then put your fabric back under your needle and then sew. Stop a few inches before you get to the end, cut your angle just like you see me do here, shove that little pointed tail there into that pocket, sew everything up. You can hand stitch that gap closed or use your sewing machine like I did. When it comes to mitering these corners, the first thing I do is the corners. I sort of press them together just like you see me doing. You lay one down and then the other one and I pop some pins in, in all four of them. As a side note, you need to check and see which way that crease is going in the front. You always want to put the opposite crease in the back. In this next step, you can use the Elmer's purple stick glue or the regular sew stick glue. You're going to put some glue onto that binding and you're going to press it down with your fingers Pressing with a hot iron will help your glue dry really fast. Let's head over to the sewing machine and now all you have to do is stitch in the ditch. Be careful though, because if you didn't wrap that binding around the back far enough, you will miss some of those edges, trust me. For our advanced version, I chose the flange binding. Although I do think intermediate quilters would be ready for something like this. Take two strips of fabric that are contrasting in color and pin them together. Be sure to note the right widths for each color. One color will be the piping and the other will be more dominant. In order for this binding to lay right, you need to take the accent, the piping color, which is green in our example here. That needs to be pressed upward toward the other color. Now simply just fold your binding right in half. You're going to put those raw edges right together, meeting them up. Give all of your binding a good hot press, making sure that that piping is peeking out perfectly. Since the flange binding is decorative, it needs to end up on the front. So that means we need to pin our binding to the back, just like in the very first demonstration. Lay raw edges of the binding to the quilt sandwich. Make sure that you lay the dominant color down First, that's what's touching the back of your quilt top. Prepare your binding just like in the other two examples with the folding and the pressing and all that jazz. <laughs> start sewing that binding down with that eighth of an inch to start with and then you will back stitch and then you will put in your quarter inch seam allowance and sew from there. When you get to the corner, you can do that 45 degree angle just like in the other examples. It really is amazing how that tiny stitch of that 45 degree angle keeps everything in check so that we don't overstitch on our corners of our binding. On the corner I just showed you, that's one example of how I sew a corner on without taking it from my needle. Let me show you a second way I do it. I do the 45 degree stitch down to the corner and back again, but this time I'm going to lift my needle up without cutting my threads and I'm just going to pull it out with everything attached. Then I'm able to look at it and see how I'm actually maneuvering that corner. And then I make sure that the fold and the edge are flush there and then I'm able to just put it back underneath my needle and continue on sewing. I think not clipping those threads when you're working on that corner keeps everything nice and neat. There's no stopping and trimming threads, although later you can trim those threads, but it just keeps the work moving. I've stopped a couple inches prior to the end of my binding. I'm going to cut at an angle, the very end there, and slip it into that pocket, and then I'm just going to continue sewing that all up. Next, I'm going to miter all four corners and put clips on them or pins. I do this ahead of time because I don't like problems and issues to pop up. So I wanna make sure that my corners are gonna be right before I even do the rest. For this example, I've taken out my double-sided quilting tape and this is going to help adhere that the binding to the actual quilt top. This way, I won't have to clip it or pin it and take all that to my sewing machine. I can just freely sew. I'm sure you probably have questions like, does it gum up your needle? Nope, it sure does not. Does it stay in the binding forever and ever? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's actually washable and washes right out. 
Now it's time to head to the sewing machine and stitch in that tiny ditch between the two colors. Be sure to use matching threads so your mistakes don't show up like mine. Oh my word, I'm definitely straight line challenged. <laughs> Wait, it's not over yet. I have so much more to show you. Look at your screen right now. Click one of these videos to keep on learning with me. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.